Uh, well, Chris, uh, happy new year. And going into this new year, uh, we want to be a party that uh, delivers, that delivered us out of the chaos of the Trump administration, that delivers on ending the pandemic, gets people vaccinated, gets people back to work, uh, and addresses you know a, a lot of the issues that uh, still persist around climate. Now we're up against, of course, chaos. We're up against the Republican Party uh, that chooses violence over voting. And on January 6th, as we commemorate and honor the fallen officers and the wounded officers of that day, the Republicans will be celebrating the arsonist of that day and Donald Trump. And that's a contrast we have to draw for every American. You, you said this, uh, I believe, yesterday. You said every politician says this is the most important election of our lifetime, and that's true, fact-checked, uh, have, having covered many, many elections. It may be, but it could also be the last one. Republicans have chosen violence over voting. We have to outvote the violence. Saddle up. What does that mean? Yeah, I'd like to know that, too. We have to outvote the violence. We have to outvote the violence. Now, I'm not sure if you saw my tweet about this, but... I responded saying you can't outvote shit because the last election was the most important and Democrats won. You won. So now is the time for you to stop telling others to do something. And now is the time for you and your party to take action. His response to the threat posed to democracy by Republicans is to just vote harder. Outvote the violence. I mean, it's... It's a fucking meme at this point. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. Their answer is always going to be, well, you should have voted harder. Yeah, you know, I get that we have a 60 plus, uh, you know, uh, filibuster proof majority in the Senate. But, you know, one of the Democrats here is wavering. So you should have voted harder. You should have given us 80 Democrats in the Senate. There's always going to be more that you could have done. It's never that they didn't work hard enough. It's always that you didn't do enough for them. Like if this were Don't Look Up in the movie, they would just be telling people to vote harder as the comet comes barreling down towards us. They're, they're, they're just, they're one trick ponies. They don't even know how to respond to these crises that we're facing. They don't know how to meet the, uh, the moment. They don't know how to respond to the threats that Republicans pose to democracy. So all they say is vote. I mean, it's, it's a joke. And, you know, I'm glad that Chris Hayes is asking him what that means. But as you see throughout this interview, he's not going to really push back. Chris, I'm worried that if Republicans uh, win in the midterm elections, uh, that voting as we know it in this country uh, will be gone. They're already putting as many barriers to the ballot box as possible in Arizona, Florida, Texas, Georgia. And on the other side of the finish line, they're putting in place processes where they could reverse the outcome, even if we crawl through glass and run through the fire to get to the ballot box. And so uh, if they and he's right about that, he's right about that. But that's why you have a limited window of time to actually act. You are the ones now who have to take responsibility and you have to make sure that they don't do that, because the harder it is for people to vote, the more difficult it is to tell people to vote with a straight face. I don't know why, by the way, the video looks like shit. I'll have to adjust this in the settings later, but it looks like shit. Hopefully it looks better for you all. But uh, I pulled up a window of the stream and the video looks like ass. It's like three frames per second. So I apologize for that. Hopefully you can still get the point overall uh, about this video. Well, to win the house, uh, the damage they could do, uh, you know, to permanently uh, make it difficult to vote and, and just alter the way that we participate in a democratic process uh, could be irreversible. And, and so uh, this may not be, as I, as I said, uh, this is not only the most important election. Uh, if we don't get it right, it could be the last election because they're also putting in place what I believe uh, is a way to make sure that Donald Trump wins uh, with what they're doing across state no, legislatures uh, to allow them to reverse the outcome in the electoral hey, college. Shut the fuck up. Um, as a lawmaker, for him to say things like, oh, well, this could be the last election, it doesn't come across as very sincere. It seems like you're trying to fear monger to get people to vote. And he's correct. Like he has adequately assessed the issue here. He knows that there is a threat to democracy right now posed by the Republican Party. But then he's being purposefully hyperbolic. And if I'm just a regular MSNBC viewer and I don't know any better, I think... Well, wow, it seems like, you know, he is really just trying to get us to vote uh, by saying anything. This is going to be the last election. That seems a little bit implausible. 
I mean, maybe you can get away with this if you're a Fox News viewer, but on MSNBC, even if liberals can be insufferable at times, they've got to know a little bit better, right? Am I wrong to think that? I mean, you're being way too hyperbolic, assuming Democrats do nothing, which I expect them to do nothing. To say that we won't have elections anymore is just, that's stupid. That That is something that I, I think goes too far. Elections will become a lot less democratic. But I mean, even authoritarian regimes have elections. Kim Jong-un in North Korea has elections. So for him to say that, it, like you have to be clear and you can't use hyperbolic language when it comes to serious issues, especially if you're a lawmaker, because it just, it comes off as bad. So that rubbed me the wrong way too. And again, I might be a little bit too uncharitable here, but it just irritates me that he is just putting the burden of uh, election integrity and not in the Trump sense, but like in the voting rights sense on to Democratic Party voters. Like we did our part, bitch. Now get to work and fucking put pressure on your dumbass party to actually fix the problems being caused by Republicans in state legislatures across the country. And whenever I talk about this, that Democrats won, there's always some dickhead on Twitter who's like, well, you don't understand the way that the system works because there's only 50 Democrats in the Senate and two of them say no. So you just need more. You do need to vote more. But it's like, do you just accept that? Did Trump ever just accept that someone in his party wouldn't go along with his agenda? No, if you're Joe Biden, you're the fucking president. You make them. You make them go along with your agenda because as the president, you have power. But Joe, May uh, Joe Biden is fucking just in the Oval Office sleeping. So <laughs> I just it's really frustrating that people think, oh, well, you know what? Democrats are correct to just keep telling us to vote again and again and again. No, you have the majority. It might be narrow. It might be difficult. But you have to fight. And Eric Swalwell is in the house, right? So this isn't necessarily just about him. Really, when I say you have to fight, it you know, I'm talking about Joe Biden. But he needs to be a lot more vocal in criticizing Democratic Party leadership because they have fucking failed. That's why I also put in a link to IWillVote.com, a nonpartisan group that allows you to check your registration status and register to vote if you're not already registered. If the state... And I'm sorry... After saying all of this, is uh, is it going to be the case, and this is a rhetorical question because I already know the answer, by the way, is it going to be the case that uh, when Democrats inevitably get wiped out in 2022 at the end of this year, that they're just going to be like, well, see, we told you to vote and you didn't vote. It's, they're insufferable. This high. Uh, and they're as high as you say they are. I mean, it, it seems to me that it's absolutely incumbent upon the Democratic Party to use the majority they have. Right. The House and the Senate to do something about it legislatively. Um, obviously, you can't control that. You can, certainly can't control it from your perch in the House. But um, are you optimistic? Chuck Schumer's made some. No Don't ask him if he's optimistic, Chris Hayes. Who gives a shit? Uh, you know, I'm going to actually go after Chris Hayes, too, because you have a gigantic platform. Maybe you can do something. Maybe you could put pressure on joe biden and maybe he does like i don't watch chris hayes to be fair but you have a gigantic platform democrats watch msnbc they know what their hosts are saying maybe you should uh i don't know call out the democratic party for failing here text dan says 100 percent. it's it's my fault the democrats suck i should vote for them uh I should vote for them harder. Yeah, exactly. They'll blame progressives like every time in the past 40 years. Absolutely. It, it, it's frustrating because it's it's the same thing every time. And it's just so exhausting. It's so exhausting. It's about that this year, uh, that, that the Senate and the full 50 senator caucus on the Democratic side understands that same urgency that you do. We've done our work in the House, uh, Chris, the For the People Act, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, and now we have to and look, create the public sentiment. To be fair, he's right about that. They did do the work in the House um, for the most part. So it really is the Senate. So I don't want to be too down on Eric Swalwell because he is a member of the House and not the Senate. But still, I mean, this is your party. You are in U.S. Congress. I mean, you at least have the phone number to Chuck Schumer to Joe Manchin. You at least have the ear of the president do something. I mean, he's right. The way that he describes the threat to democracy is correct. He's absolutely right. He's a little bit hyperbolic in saying that there won't be elections anymore, but he's right. So if this really is the emergency that you say it is, you would be doing more than telling people to vote and linking to a website where they can check their fucking registration status. Leave that to the grassroots activists. Leave that to the DCCC. They're the ones who are like the campaign wing of the party. You 
use your power as a lawmaker or your influence rather as a lawmaker to um, put pressure on them. And it's not like it's a guarantee that you putting pressure on them as a member of the House is going to work. It probably won't. But just telling people to vote, it feels like a slap in the face. It feels like a slap in the face.